I just watched the documentary entitled, Do I Sound Gay? It was an enlightening experience, although probably not for the reasons it was designed. One thing that bothered me about it is how many people being interviewed were suggesting that the gay accent is just people pronouncing words decently. Well, DJs, orators, and many other people like myself would like to disagree with that sort of ridiculous notion. In this documentary, Do I Sound Gay?, it was shown that some people didn't act feminine before they came out of the closet. We are taught by our society, and even within gay culture, that to be gay, you need to throw away all the social sides to being aggressive, powerful, assertive, and competitive, and route all those things into your sexuality instead. If you can't be powerful, assertive, and competitive socially, you can certainly be those things in the bedroom. And when someone feels they cannot be those things, then one is naturally going to gravitate towards feminine mannerisms and speech. As David said in the documentary, when he was trying to sound more masculine, some of the concepts of what it would take to state things in a more masculine way were uncomfortable to him. This is because David, whether he admits it or not, believes that masculinity is actually hypermasculinity and that it's a bad thing, and that it's toxic. Hypermasculinity is more of this type of thing, you know. Or, yo, yo, you got a problem with me? What's your problem, man? What's your problem? That, that kind of, uh, that kind of bullshit. That kind of hypermasculinity. That kind of machoism. But that's not just masculinity. And that's what is being pushed so often nowadays. That... Just me talking and carrying myself the way I do is now being considered hypermasculine. And I think that's a crock of shit. We are getting taught more and more that being masculine is a bad thing. The ones leading this are feminist fundamentalists and gay men. Although gay men try not to say it outright, but it often gets said anyway, like at comments I've heard at gay establishments dozens of times, that whole... I don't trust gay men that aren't at least slightly feminine. What are they trying to hide? Many gay men are actually quite aroused by masculinity, but don't feel they have the right to be traditionally masculine themselves because in their viewpoints, that would make them bad people. Many gay men want to be able to be what is traditionally feminine as far as attitudes, roles, etc., but talk like and have mannerisms of someone masculine and they're having a heck of a time doing it. Well, guess what? That doesn't happen very often. It happens, but not very often. If someone is not naturally that way to begin with, it can be achieved with a lot of work, just like someone can be traditionally masculine, but talk like and have mannerisms of feminine people. But again, that's not what usually occurs. As time goes on, there's this idea that to be assertive, aggressive, competitive, and that to take advantage of the power you have as a human being is b -b -b bad okay? We all have power as human beings, both men and women. Biology might make it ever so slightly more difficult for women, but it's still quite feasible. There is also a big difference between being aggressive, being assertive, being competitive and powerful, and being whiny, pouty, and being a nasally-sounding, incessant complainer. One is where the person assumes power, and the other is someone demanding that people listen, often feebly demanding that people listen, sometimes jumping up and down in a pouty rage and feebly demanding that people listen. Sure, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, and sometimes if you complain enough, something will get done but that's after a period of time. It's not instant, and it's also not a guarantee. Of course, nothing's a guarantee. If someone complains about something just once, in a masculine manner, in an aggressive and powerful manner, it is likely to get noticed a lot quicker than someone who just once bitches, jumps up and down, and nasally soundingly whines about the very same thing. The masculine approach will usually get more accomplished more quickly, provided it isn't taken to extremes where there is physical violence or the threat of physical violence. 
That sort of thing is not acceptable. But that's not a given just for someone being masculine. There are plenty of feminine people who take it to physical violence or threats of physical violence. You can study in your feminist theory and gender studies all you want that this shouldn't be the case and that we need to change social attitudes about that sort of thing, but the truth is that we need to stop promoting this false idea that femininity is somehow more moral, justified, and caring than masculinity, or that feminine people should be treated exactly the same as masculine people no matter what they're doing. Quite frankly, to feel bad about the power you can have as a human being is social suicide. And the more we try to make up for how we're being taught to demonize that power, the worse things are going to get. Collectively, we are going to try to get more laws passed that make up for this sort of thing. More and more, collectively, we are making people feel like they don't have the right to be powerful, assertive, competitive, nor aggressive. And as I said earlier, there may be a biological predisposition, which isn't any sort of absolute, for men to be more powerful in attitude and mindset than women, but that doesn't mean we can't teach women to be more powerful in attitude and mindset. Sure, laws can give people power, but what about the power that we are naturally capable of wielding ourselves? Well, I guess we're supposed to demonize that, apparently. Femininity itself, no matter what sex or gender it is applied to, when femininity itself is being put up as being better and more humane and more moral than masculinity, then that type of femininity is what I believe to be the toxic element in our society. It is the very thing that teaches that we shouldn't be powerful, assertive, competitive, nor aggressive. It's this idea that in order to get what you want, you pass laws. You don't do anything for yourself. It's all about groupthink. It's all about marching with a group of people and making demands. Hey, we are human beings, folks. We need to build our society on what we are, not what we are not. Not what we think we should be as human beings, but again, what we actually are. We need a basic understanding of human psychology. We do not have to lose our empathy, nor our nurturing elements, nor our ability to be helpful, caring human beings in order to be masculine. That sort of garbage that gets taught by these regressive elements in many modern political and ideological social movements is one of the most damaging stereotypes and myths that we could possibly believe. If you don't want to be controlled or be stepped on or be treated like you as a person don't matter, then you have to step up and change your attitude about power and competitiveness and assertiveness and, yes, even aggression. You cannot be scared of or have any sort of apprehension to being powerful. You don't do this for yourself by gathering with others in numbers. You don't do this through groupthink. You don't do this with laws. You don't do this by marching in a line with other people and making whiny, bitchy, privileged demands. You do this with yourself. We don't declare that other male mammals are bad, b -b -b bad for asserting more power than their female counterparts. We also wouldn't declare it to be bad if their female counterparts suddenly started to assert more power. If people were to declare that a male lion should somehow be mentally taught that their power is a bad thing, those people would be looked at as insane, and rightfully so. And let's face it, we are animals. We are mammals. We have some of the same biological things going on as many other mammals. We can hope that those who are oppressed or suppressed can be taught how not to be so suppressed, how to get out of that suppression. But that isn't done by demonizing the power of anyone. When we use guilt and shame to make the powerful weak in our attempts to give ourselves more power, we're actually weakening everyone. Let me state that again. When we use guilt and shame to make the powerful weak in our attempts to give ourselves more power, we're actually weakening everyone. In a business, you don't take care of bottlenecks by slowing down all production to the levels of that bottleneck, although there's obviously going to be a certain amount of that naturally, and we shouldn't overly concern ourselves with those elements that occur naturally. But you do this by trying to reduce those bottlenecks. The same can be said about our society. 
Since women and gay men are being taught to be weak, we should certainly not demonize masculinity as the answer to that problem. Instead, we should teach ourselves how we can get rid of the submissive, docile, and controllable elements to how women and gay men are taught to be. Let us make no mistake about it. Society wants gay men and all women to be feminine. Society wants gay men to be easily recognizable as gay. Society wants gay men to never have any reasonable amount of power. As a result of this, I think there is a pretty big connection with being gay and this anti-masculine, anti-power, anti-aggressive, anti-competitive mindset that is becoming more and more common. If it is a bad thing to exert any sort of power over anyone at any time, then it can be easily translated to people at early ages that having sexual attractions to women and being assertive about it in any way is bad as well. I mean, you want to be a good person, don't you? If you start heading towards the feminine ideals of things, well, you're automatically okay because being feminine is more moral and all that crap, right? To quote a eurythmic song in regards to what people do and want, some of them want to use you, some of them want to get used by you, some of them want to abuse you, and some of them want to be abused. We either use, get used, abuse, or get abused. This is in any setting, in any situation, at any given period of time. There is power play and competition happening all the time, everywhere. To demonize those things is to demonize reality. No matter how hard you try to go against those elements in yourself, they will show up anyway. It will result in passive aggressiveness. It will result in jealousy that shows its ugly head in ways that are hard to detect. It will result in emotional dishonesty, emotional disconnectedness, and often result in even intellectual dishonesty. Living in denial of who and what you are is not a way to live. Don't let regressive people teach you otherwise. Thanks for listening.